using enumeration district maps with emphasis on the 1940 and 1950 U.S. censuses. On 1 April of 2022, the 1950 United States Population Census will be released to the public. After release, it should take several months for a full name index to be completed. I anticipate a volunteer crowdsourcing project uh, that's going to involve lots and lots of people. But if you know, if you know where your targets were on 1 April 1950, you should be able to find the residents on the release census schedules. You don't have to wait for that name index. Steve Morse, my volunteers and I have been preparing for this event for years with a number of locational tools to help researchers at stevemorse.org. I'm going to explain that free website. I myself have over a dozen YouTube videos on this census with the hope it will reduce your learning curve when you actually work with the 1950 material. This video, taken from previous videos and augmented with much new material, uh, I found a lot of examples to show you, will concentrate on census maps, what they are, how to use them, where to find them, and some of the pitfalls that you probably will encounter. And I did this uh, video on September of 2021. So let's ask a basic question, which is, why would you want to use census district maps in the first place? And these are maps that have uh, census tract information on them and enumeration district numbers on them. Well, you might want to uh, see on a free online map area what your area looked like decades ago. What did it look like in 1950, 1930, even 1900? There may be some maps available. You want to get the enumeration district number for a location so you can find the census schedule for that area and census year. And I anticipate a lot of people are going to be using these maps uh, initially and maybe uh, only, but there is another way of doing this as well. And that's the third uh, situation of why you might want to use district maps. And that is you use first the One Step Unified tool, and I'll explain that in a while, to get an enumeration district number. It's a non-map based way of doing it and want to check it, it on the ED number on the corresponding census map. So you do want to look at the census map in this, in this case as well. So here we have census maps that uh, are available right now at the National Archives catalog uh, and our own uh, One Step website. And that census maps will show you uh, the city streets from 1950, 1940, and then the census district numbers either census tracts or enumeration districts. The One Step website by Steve Morse is a well-known website for genealogists and other researchers. It's at stevemorse.org. It's not at stevemorse.com. Uh, that person is a professional guitar player, musician. But if you get to the One Step web pages, you will want the unified tool on the U.S. Census section. That's the main tool for census research. And I'll show you aspects of it. So what is a census enumeration district? Pretty basic question. Here is a part of the 1950 uh, census schedule, the population schedule. And you'll see at the upper left, there is a space for the ED number. An enumeration district, or ED, is defined by the National Archives as a basic geographic area of a size that, be, that could be covered by a single census taker, that's a person called an enumerator, within one census period. And uh, in the 1950 U.S. Census, Enumerators in cities were given two weeks to complete their task, those in rural areas a month. 
Until 1880, the U.S. Census was based on state, county, or township, or even city uh, areas. But starting in 1880, enumeration districts then became the basic sampling unit. And it's abbreviated ED, and I'll use ED uh, throughout this video. If you want to find the census schedules for an address on the 1940 and 1950 census, you must first convert your address to an enumeration district number in order to locate the record. And you can either do that by maps or you can do that uh, by uh, the one-step method. So first I'm going to show you a comparison between enumeration districts between 1940 and 1950 the census years. The population of the United States increased by about 20 million people. But even a greater increase occurred in the number of enumeration districts. And you can see there's just a jump there. Uh, and uh, there can be a lot more to go through. And therefore, the amount of people per enumeration district uh, was 820 in 1940. And it's going to be much smaller here, about 660. So that's an average. That's an average. Some EDs have just a handful of people. Others may have 2,000 or more. I have a YouTube uh, video demonstrating using the one-step method how to find enumeration districts in urban and rural areas. But this present video that we're going to talk about is going to concentrate on maps, on a map approach. Even though our own methodology is based on maps, but we have transcribed the maps into text files. So what's the purpose of an ED besides making genealogists happy? And other researchers too, by the way. Economists, sociologists, they're all waiting for the opening of the 1950 uh, census. Well, here is a press photograph. This is not a real uh, census taker. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a model. And she's looking at a portfolio. And what she's assumed to be looking at is a map showing her responsibility. If she was in a rural area, there might even be an aerial photograph there. And so EDs are set up to help census takers completely cover their assigned area so they can see exactly where the boundaries are and prevent overlap between adjacent enumeration districts so you don't get a person being double counted uh, on the census. How is a specific ED defined? Well, there are certain rules that the Census Bureau follows. It's usually a polygon area on the map. It's drawn that way. It could be an institution. It could be kind of a point on the map. It's a two-part number since 1930. Now, I'm going to emphasize that aspect because beginners often make that mistake that they see a single number on a map and don't realize that that is incomplete. Uh, an ED doesn't cross political lines. It will not, uh, it will not straddle a, uh, a city line or a town line. It will not straddle a ward line. So political lines are important boundaries. And you should know that the ED numbers and boundaries in an area may change between censuses. You can't use the 1940 ED number for uh, people who lived in uh, this house didn't move for 1950. That It doesn't work that way. Boundaries are important, and boundaries can be political lines, but they can change with time. If you're looking at these boundaries in 1950 and trying to figure out where they are in, in 2021, uh, it may not be that easy. Railroad tracks can be a boundary, but they can be abandoned and become bike trails and roadways. Streams could be a boundary. But the streams could be diverted or paved over in culverts. And then streets are, obviously could be boundaries, but street names also can change over time. So there's a certain amount of, uh, uh, of variability here that you have to understand. If you look at maps, 
and these are uh, parts of enumeration district maps. I'm going to show you a lot of them, lots of examples I'm going to bring here. Um, this is a map for Brainerd, Minnesota. Uh, it has a lot of information about uh, uh, the enumeration district numbers. You see their double number. Uh, you want to try and figure out where this map came from. It's not so easy from what I'm showing you. And it's not easy to figure out what the date of the map is. However, I'm interested in the lower left corner. And it says that the uh, city engineer has hereby certified that the town limits, the corporate limits shown on this map are correct as of May 6, 1948. He's not saying that, that the map is accurate, that the streets are accurate, that the street names are accurate. He's indicating that the city limits, the boundaries are accurate. That's important for census research. Here's another one. There's a 1950 map for Heron, um, Illinois. And we know it is at least a 1941 map because it has that it's uh, has the population of this area, which is less than 10,000. And on here, we find out that this uh, city clerk on August 21st, 1948, uh, signed this, that he certified that the corporate limits and the ward boundaries, the political boundaries shown in this map are correct. Uh, just illustrating the point that boundaries are important for the Census Bureau to keep the enumeration districts within the boundaries. Okay, and uh, just to make that, that point. So where, did, where does the Census Bureau get these maps from? Do they go out and actually, um, you know, have a cartographer go up and down the streets? Uh, well, we'll find out. The reason we want to know the source and also the date is that it may give you a clue as to the accuracy and reliability of that of that map you're looking at, and we're going to we're going to look at that in this sections. So the Census Bureau does not do their own field mapping; they rely on public agencies uh, to provide the maps, soil survey maps, city and county government maps, highway departments, public roads. Um, the Commerce Department has a number of departments that deal with maps. General Land Office, Topographical Surveys, Department of Interior might be involved. Power Utilities, putting down lines. Commercial companies, they try and get maps wherever they can find them. And there's a whole variety of maps. In fact, it makes it interesting to look at these enumeration district maps, these census maps. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple of maps and where they come from. Here's a map of Greater Gainesville, Georgia, and it's from the Chamber of Commerce. It's a commerce map. And actually, I enjoy these maps because usually they have more information about the area than uh, just a simple government map. And another Chamber of Commerce map from Hartsville, South Carolina. They have interesting points about the area. And then another, this is, these are official 1950 office maps. This is for, I'm looking for uh, on the bottom right, Monesson, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's the official 1950 map. Now, if you notice, this is really a strange map. This is a Chamber of Commerce map. Uh, it does have an index, which is nice. Most maps do not have. It has things, uh, buildings in the, uh, in the town or the city. But all the writing is upside down. So the Census Bureau decided to tilt the map. And I think the reason why is that in this particular map, uh, not surprising for some enumeration district maps, north is not going straight up. It's not on the top of the map. North is at the bottom. So they must have rotated the map to make north uh, to, on the top. And that's why all the, uh, uh, the ED numbers are upside down. And so with the upper left information about it, just to make things a little bit harder for us. Here's another category of where maps can come from. 
This is the city of Belmont. This is their 1950 office map. And it turns out that it's from a uh, insurance agent. And there is his number. He gives these out, kind of like a business card, compliments of. So he gets into the history book as having the official census map for 1950 for Belmont, California. Here is a map of Las Vegas in 1950. That's it. That's the whole city of Las Vegas. And we look and see where this map came from. And it was compiled by a title insurance company. And then we also see uh, next to the, uh, the cowboy logo, compliments of Las Vegas, Nevada, Chamber of Commerce. Then there are maps from uh, commercial uh, facilities that want to attract your business. Here is Oxford, Ohio, in which a printing company is compliments of on the bottom right. Uh, it does have a number of the features uh, of this particular community, which is kind of neat. Uh, you can see that there are uh, public schools, churches, uh, uh, it looks like uh, educational facilities, etc. here. And, and these maps are kind of neat. Another one. This is from Louisiana. This is from Thibodeau, it looks like. Uh, it's an automobile and truck service center map uh, to bring in uh, business. And this one is from Tell City, Indiana, in which there are a bunch of advertisers on the top so the person making this map went around and uh, said, you know, are you willing to, to be on this map and get some money for that? And has what they think is a classy little uh, uh, motto there, when you boost, you boom. Uh, might have been considered a cutting, cutting edge uh, mottos in those days. This one is really a neat one that I found. Um, this is from Cheviot, Ohio. Uh, that it's dated 1947. I should point out that most of these maps are going to be at, at the at the closest to 1950. It's probably going to be 1947, 1948, because the Census Bureau has to have a lead time to put in the enumeration districts. So don't expect to find a circa 1950 map exactly uh, in on 1950. And this map is from 1947. I don't know how. This got accepted by the Census Bureau because if we look at it closely, the map is from the uh, Cheviot Democratic Campaign Committee, and it's a um, it's a uh, brochure, a flyer, advocating the election of a slate of politicians uh, from mayor all the way to council members, and the map is a map of polling places in Cheviot. So uh, must have been a good politician to decide to uh, expand his area of, uh, uh, of uh, interest. And then this map is one of my favorite maps. It's not because of where the map came from, but because of the writing on the upper left. And uh, I don't know whether that red was before the Census Bureau put in the enumeration districts, or we'll put in afterwards uh, while the supervisor of the area had this map and before they divided it up among the various enumeration districts. Now, College Park, Maryland is the home of the University of Maryland. There's lots of students there. In 1950, students were enumerated at their college, not at their home. And the map has, lo and behold, all the wine and beer places in College Park, Maryland. Well, that might make sense if you want to find people. Once the Census Bureau has their base map for an area, they then draw the ED boundaries, uh, usually in orange, at least in 1950, and place unique ED numbers in each of those polygons. The Bureau also produced a text file, and I'll show you a part of that later, that usually show, shows or showing the boundary or political definitions for each enumeration district. And that document is the National Archives film series T1224 from 1950 to 1950.
from 1830 to 1890 and 1910 to 1950. And that's also something useful that you need to know about, and I will tell you more about that. So as I indicated earlier, it's, it's nice to know uh, how current these maps are uh, versus the 1950 census. And you'll be surprised. Here is uh, Faribault, Minnesota. The, the base map is from 1924. Or Antigo, Wisconsin. The 1950 base map says it's January 1926. Now, sometimes you'll see something like that, and it will say revised or upgraded, etc. Uh, I think that these maps don't show that. Here is uh, Henderson, Texas. The base map is 1933, uh, though there may be some upgrades to it. I see in 1938 to the right, and I see some sort of correction uh, up there, uh, which is a little, I think there might even be a 1946 uh, somebody actually did some correction of the map, but certainly not 1950. South Portland, Maine, base map 1934. So I think as long as the town limits are correct, and as long as the political divisions like wards are correct, that the Census Bureau is fine using these sorts of maps. Philadelphia, 1950 ED maps. There are 18 maps that make up the Philadelphia complete 1950 map. And it takes a while to find where these maps uh, are dated. And so I found on sheet 7 of the 18 maps that this was a Federal Works Projects Administration for Pennsylvania. Well, the WPA existed from 1935 to 1943. So this map is probably not 43, it's probably 1942, it's at least eight years, eight years to, to the actual 1950 census. In eight years, World War II ended, there was a baby boom, the GI Bill encouraged people to buy houses, there was a housing market explosion, and there are streets in Philadelphia in 1950 that didn't exist in 1942. And you have to understand that when you're dealing with these enumeration district maps. There's another type of map you will see called a compiled map. Some compiled maps are drafted by the Census Bureau from aerial photos, Sanborn insurance maps, miscellaneous documents they have in their files, which may include previous census maps. I'll show you something about this in a second. And I found that compiled maps may have a high number of typos, streets never built, or even wrong arrangements of streets and names. So here's one from Milledgeville, Georgia. I manipulated it to bring out the very light uh, uh, text and it says this is compiled from map by E. Rig or something, city engineer, information from aerial photographs, copy of original plan by Daniel Sturks, Stooges, 1808, map by Dr. Mitchell, 1842, and other surveys, March 1946. And on the bottom it says, compiled and traced by A.F. Bobic, 1947. Or well, this one. Now, this is the city of St. Joseph, Buchanan County, Missouri. I'm going to use this for a uh, example later, important example. So keep that in mind. As you can see, it's a, a compiled map. It's compiled from, um, and that's meaningless to me. There's no date there. Uh, what exactly is this dependent on? And you look at this map, and I proofed it. Someone else did the transcription, one of my volunteers. And what jumped out at me was uh, a street called Nippleton. That's a strange name for a street. Must have an interesting uh, history. And then when I actually looked at a modern map, that's not that. It's Middleton. Middleton. Uh, and then I looked closer, and uh, Pendleton is misspelled. Uh, 
Rosin, Rosin, lost its E, Rose, it should be Rosin. Now, if you notice something else about this map, that the orange enumeration district numbers aren't, as I told you, that they were a two-part number. It's only one here. And I'm going to tell you more about that. The number, that nine, that's not the real number. The real number is 117-9. And I'll explain why I added the prefix to that. Here's another one. Another from West Monroe, Louisiana. It's a compiled map. Again, I have no idea uh, what the date is from this. Uh, that file map, whatever that came from. And here... Uh, you can see that the uh, the compiled map originally had Crossley, Haynes, crossed out, Drew, another Haynes. And the person who looked at this map and, and edited it decided that there are two Haynes no good and crossed out the, for the bottom Haynes and put down Benton. Well, what is it actually on, uh, on a modern map, which I assume reflects what it was then? And the first Haynes is correct. Shouldn't have crossed that out. And it's not Benton, the other street. It's Benson. So the, there are errors that creep in to these compiled maps. So that's one of the reason you want to find out if you're dealing with a compiled map uh, or not. Now, as I indicated, enumeration district numbers are a double number. But ED numbers on large city maps are incomplete. They are a single number. So here I am in Long Beach, California in 1950. The center with that double circle is a good one to look at. To the right of it, there is something in a circle that's 333-D. That is a census tract number. The enumeration district numbers are in orange, uh, 69, 74, 73, 68, surrounding that double circle. And uh, you can see that the census tracts are defined because their boundaries have darker uh, lines. Uh, they're not in orange. Okay, so that's 74 below the double circle. Is that the enumeration district number? And the answer is, it's on the map, but it is not. It's incomplete. And what you need to do is you need to look at the map legend. Now, in the case of Long Beach, there are four small maps that make up the full map for Long Beach. Each has a legend, but only the on page one is the legend filled out. You need to get to the first part of these multiple maps. And if you go to the first page, you will see on the legend that all ED numbers are preceded by 65. So that number 72 above that arrow, just above it, uh, it's not ED 72, it's ED 65-72. And when you record the enumeration districts from these maps for your target individuals, make sure you have a double number. Uh, because if you try and enter that number on an online utility asking for the ED number, it will reject it. And you don't want to be, be embarrassed in front of your own, your own computer. You know, they remember those things. To reinforce that, here's Philadelphia. Single number in orange on the bottom left. Only one legend on the first map of 18 18 maps that make up the Philadelphia ED map, the total map. And here we find out that um, all ED numbers are preceded by 51. 51-1 51 to 51108. And again, EDs are two part numbers, and there's the two parts. But on the maps, those 18 maps, you will see numbers from 1 to 3108. You will not see 51 dash. Now, it turns out, actually, in this uh, particular page, there are a bunch of institutional names on the top. That's what those lists are, and I think they're all preceded by 51. But the actual enumeration district map drops them. I mean, why would you want to um, 
put 51, 3,100 times in very small polygons. It's easy just to drop the prefix, knowing, hopefully knowing, that people who use the map understand that. Now, the maps are made by humans. So humans make mistakes, and you will find there are some errors. They're rare, though, but I'll show you two errors. And the first one will be in Chicago. And I'm going to show you what a ED definition looks like on NARA T1224. And uh, I scanned all 38 rolls of that, those films. Uh, we had our volunteers transcribe them, and that forms part of our database, searchable database. But here we're looking at the actual scan. Um, on the top, it's 1950, uh, the real number, uh, frame numbers, etc. And I'm interested in the bottom enumeration district, which is 103-2186. Uh, the definition is it has a ward number. It's part of a ward. It has a track number, 480. And there are other EDs that also have that track number. That's why it's a part. And then it gives me the boundaries, north, east, southwest. Every one of those lines represents the side of a polygon. So on the north side is West 31st. On the east is South Central Park Avenue, and so on. It also, and not all of them show this, says it's consisting of three blocks, and the blocks are numbered one, two, three. Every block in Chicago has a unique number. And the number is the track number and the block number. So that's 481, 482, 483 is in 103, 2186. So 103, 2186 has census track 480 and blocks one, two, and three. You're not going to see that number on the Chicago ED maps. You're not going to find it. Why? Well, here's part of the uh, uh, of the ED map. You can see there's a 480 there. We'll blow that up. And so if we're in 480, let's find blocks 1, 2, and 3. And you can look at it and you can see that 1, 2, and 3 are in, remember, it's 103-2168. Well, that's interesting because the next one down is 2187. And it's obvious that what's happened here is that the person writing the number transposed the last two numbers. So 2186 doesn't exist on this map, but there are two 2168s. Very rare to see this. Or this one, which I think is also in Philadelphia, that there's the track number 15A in a circle. It encompasses a number of enumeration districts. But here we have two blocks, 71 and 89, and they don't have an ED number because a mistake was made in drawing the boundaries. And in order to figure that out, we'd have to look at the ED definitions to figure out if those two are in 312, that's probably 313 under the uh, arrow, or potentially in 314. But these are unusual. But the Census Bureau is well aware that the maps aren't perfect. If you were a 1950 census um, enumerator, one that went around uh, getting the information, your handbook has uh, a, a section that says, quote, map corrections. In some instances, you may find that your map is not up to date. It also may be have errors in them. In such cases, make the necessary corrections in pencil. And they want, it, they want to do that because for follow-ups, they want to make sure that the maps are in good shape. This, um, other people may, have, may be doing the follow-ups. Now, there are going to be ED map difficulties. If you think that this map looks like a, uh, a conventional Google map or, or what uh, you remember service stations used to give you, uh, think again. And I wrote uh, with Steve a essay on problems using these district maps, ED maps, and you can find it on the One Step website. 
North may not be towards the top of the map, as we saw for Manesson, Pennsylvania. It's unlikely the map has an index, a street index, um, or, or any grids. Many maps are ripped, torn, darkened with age, taped. The base map may be from several years to a few decades before 1950. I already showed you that. They may be planning maps in which some of the streets were never even built. Give you some examples. This is Los Angeles, 1950. Um, I had to transcribe this map. I happened to have a good map collection of circa 1950 and was able to figure out all the streets uh, that um, the map doesn't show because of just degradation of the map. Here's another map from East Peoria um, and uh, Illinois. And it looks like maybe they tore this off of a glued piece of paper. They were lucky they got it uh, as much as they got. And you can see here, uh, it has all the, uh, the mayor, the attorney, etc. cetera, cute map. So there's some his historical aspects here uh, as well. Here's a map of Illinois. I don't know whether they had uh, paper with high acid content, but look at how dark these, this paper is. This is Peru, Illinois. This is Harvard, Illinois. And this is Streeta, Illinois. And it's going to be difficult to read the streets on these maps. Well, this one from Rochester, Minnesota, one of my favorites, in which the glue appears to have uh, seeped through the map. Uh, it's not some uh, uh, census taker gone, gone insane. And actually, the map is pretty good. The map is readable once you uh, get over all that... Uh, that uh, noise in the background. Well, this map, this is from, this is Limestone County, Texas, 1950 map. If you look at the left, um, it looks like uh, either when they digitized the map, uh, it was creased and folded back, or maybe that part of the map uh, is ripped off or something. Uh, but it certainly looks to me like a part of this map is gone. And then this is um, Cumberland, Maryland. Uh, the map is on the left, the ED map, and what it looks like on Google Maps. And you can see uh, on the top of the ED map, Pine Avenue, you can find it on the right. And uh, in fact, I think I have a laser pointer here. Yes, I think you might be able to see this. So here's Pine Avenue here, and here's Pine Avenue here. And you see all these, these streets here? Um, I doubt they were in existence and were destroyed because of the park. Instead, I think this was a planning document and these were never, um, never done in reality. So sometimes you see a map like this and I and my, and my volunteers would have uh, added these streets to our database, even though they are uh, they're phantoms, they're ghost streets in that regard. Okay. Now, I want to talk next about um, uh, split EDs. And I'm entitling this, what you see isn't reality. So here is, again, um, Philadelphia. And I did a recent four video workshop on YouTube for them. So this is fresh in my mind. Uh, the ED is 51-1550. Um, but after this ED was created in some place by the Census Bureau cartographers, someone down the line, some supervisor said, no, that's, that, that's wrong. There are too many people in that enumeration district for a single uh, census taker to actually uh, enumerate. You're going to have to split it up. Now, you don't often know that this is a split enumeration district. And this is very unusual to see that someone actually shows you where the splits are, A, B, C, D, and E. And if you follow through on that, if you follow through on that, you find out that they subdivided this into five parts. So what happened to the original number? It's gone, doesn't exist anymore. 
So if you came to a uh, utility and entered 51-1550 for Philadelphia, they would tell you there's no such enumeration district number. The numbers are either with an A or a B or a C or D or an E. And as I say, you, you won't know this. You won't, you won't see this nice way of, of people being actually told that this is a split enumeration district. Now, we know, I know, that that was split before I looked at it. And the reason is that the T1224, uh, the definitions of the EDs, show the splits. So here we have 51-1550 over there. And if I blow that up, I can just make out, and most of them are a little bit clearer than that, that in pencil, someone put down A, B, C, D, and E. And then soon after that, in this, um, in this uh, uh, document, they actually show the splits. <clears throat> There's 51-1550A, and it shows the north, east, south, and west side of this particular split. And if you look on the right, there are over 2,000 people in here. Uh, so they could have even split it more. And in this particular case, uh, each of the blocks is shown the numbers within this uh, 1550A. But because we know where the splits are and the boundaries, when we came up with our uh, database uh, using not map, using the map, but not, but the uh, actual procedure is by looking for for names. Um, we we covered the idea of split ED, EDs, and we won't make the mistake of dropping the ED prefix. Fort Worth, Texas is an unusual situation. In general, on average, about 3% of urban uh, uh, maps will have uh, split EDs. But Fort Worth, Texas had some sort of program that hired uh, teachers to do the census, and they needed enumeration, enumeration districts. So one out of two, one out of two approximately, EDs in Fort Worth, Texas are splits. So 284 is split uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven different ways. So I pity the researcher who doesn't know this, who's going to uh, look for an address uh, or even on the map for Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, doesn't know that there's a high amount of uh, splits in this particular city. So let me give you a hint. If an entry program tells you that the ED number you entered is non-existent, no such number, and you entered the two-part number, because if you entered a, just a single number, it might tell you that also, then re-enter that two-part number, but this time add a capital A to the end. And if you get results, uh, that's great. Then look at, the, look at that, see if your, your address is there, then put in that number again with a capital B. Look at that, a capital C, until you either find your address or you run out of numbers. So if I were to make this into a two-part um, uh, series, this video, I would have paused right here because we completed really the first kind of segment. And now we're going to find out where are these maps. These are publicly available. They are available now. So let's take a deep breath before we proceed to the next section. The original maps, if they still exist, are at the National Archives in College Park, Maryland. That's where their cartography unit resides. In 1940, those maps, the ED maps, were released uh, about nine months online before the opening of that census, and they were scanned in black and white. In fact, the film is in black and white, and I'll show you why that's important in a while. The 1950 maps were put online, I think about 2014 actually, before the 1950 census becomes public in 2022. 
And those maps are in color. Those maps are in color. So here we're looking at a 1940 ED map. This is the Hollywood Hills and uh, north of Hollywood, California. Look at all the numbers there. What's, what is going on? And the answer is that there are actually five districts, each district's having their own numbers. If we're looking for 60-125, well, first of all, you'd have to know that 60 doesn't show. And uh, you look at it, 125 to the right is 124, 123. Those are enumeration district um, units. 94, 93, those are EDs too. 53, well, that is a uh, census tract. And it just takes a lot of patience to know that. The, the reason why there are so many numbers here is that the original map, the, the numbers were in different colors, were in different colors. And because the film was in black and white, as the scan is, uh, that's lost on us, makes it very difficult. So here is the same area, same area uh, as of uh, 1940, same area. Uh, and here now we have only two districts. This, the enumeration districts are in orange, remember they're in orange. And in the circles are the various census tracts. But still, um, and I had to figure out the streets within each of these EDs and had to use a, uh, a circa 1950 map, a lot of those are, are Ill illegible. So even though the map looks better, still there are problems here. In addition to putting stuff online, the National Archives has two film series that are filled with ED maps. M1930 is a film series of over 8,000 separate map sheets for the 1930 census. And uh, the, this uh, description, I've given you an address for getting to that description. FamilySearch.org, which you can register for free, has digitized those maps. And I've given you a tiny URL number on the bottom uh, that you can write down. You could pause the uh, the video. The big microfilm sequence is A3378. And this has ED maps from 1900 to 1940, both county and urban areas. However, the early map, the early years, 1900, 1910, um, are pretty uh, sparse. So you may, you may or may not be able to get what you're looking for. Again, Family Search has digitized that series. Two very important resources for you if you're going past 1950-1940. So where are these maps? They're on the National Archives catalog and some of them are actually uh, on our own one-step map index. I want to show you how that works. So the National Archive put about 9,600 ED maps online uh, on their catalog. It includes 1950 county ED maps and maps of cities with five or more EDs. It's not complete. They are missing some county and urban area maps, but you know, it's pretty, it's pretty darn good. So let's take a look and search for Philadelphia since I just did that. And I could have searched a little bit better than I did. Uh, you put down 1950 census map Philadelphia. I should have put down Philadelphia PA. And I press the uh, search uh, symbol. And I find out that there are 2,900 results. Well, I can refine that. But the next thing I usually do is uh, hit the images. I only want to see images. And now it's reduced to 600 plus. And I usually get to see what, I, what I'm looking for in the first 20 uh, uh, enti entities that they show me. And lo and behold, I think this was the ninth one. 
I have here um, the 1950 ED maps, Philadelphia County, Philadelphia. They always have the county, then the city. EDs from 51-1 to 3108. Wish they had said to 51-3108. And I want to make a point because we're going to be looking at this. It's not a defect. But the way the, um, the search algorithm works uh, on the catalog. So if I enter a term on the search form, the search engine searches in the catalog for the entered search terms in the title, in the title of the items they hold. So if it's not in the title and it's what I asked them to search for, um, they won't find it except in a certain situation, which I'll show you. So next I'm going to show you that the one step tool has also a map index. Why would we need a, you know, a double map index? Well, you'll find out. So let me come down here and get a laser pointer. Yes. So here's the unified tool. It's unified because it has a number of different utilities, one step utilities. Uh, the default is now 1950. If I open this up, I would see 1940, 1930, etc. Let's assume I'm looking for an address in Manhattan. I want to know the enumeration district, and it shows me all the EDs in Manhattan. There are lots of them. So to get to this point, I opened this up, chose New York as a state. Could have put down New York County here, but I left that blank. And I open this up and I see lots and lots of cities in New York State. And one of them, instead of uh, New York City, uh, et cetera, is Manhattan. So I choose Manhattan. As soon as I choose Manhattan, what happens is this pops up and it says, if you want to see ED maps from New York County, um, click here. And that's going to take you to the one step map utility and take you to the one step map utility. Now, if I didn't want to do that, um, and I, I would enter my street name here, let's say East Broadway, um, it would reduce the number of EDs. Not all of them have East Broadway. And then I would uh, find out from the address what other street names are on my block. And there would be another choice here. I would choose another street on the block, another street on the block, etc. When I enter all four streets on the block, which has my house number, I should, in most cases, get down to a single enumeration district. And that's explained in that YouTube video uh, that I showed you about uh, finding rural and urban EDs. But let's go to this, uh, this map utility. And here's a map utility. And it fills in this and it filled in that. It didn't fill in this because it might assume that there are uh, a number of uh, cities here. There's only Manhattan. And I can get the map images from here. Let me tell you a little bit about this in a second. Okay. Get rid of the laser pointer. Now, it turns out that the, the National Archive catalog map has problems. There are mistyped, mislinked, misplaced, and missing maps, and there are hidden maps. And I'm going to show you that by comparing the archives and the one-step indexes in those situations. If, this is a hint, if you can't find your map on the National Archives catalog, but the one-step unified tool for 1950 has a street index for that area, we must have either found the map on the archives catalog or didn't find it, but made our own ED map for the missing entity. So it's not just gone. And here's my problem history. The cartography branch were excellent for us in terms of getting us these ED maps as they came online, even before in many cases they went into the, uh, the catalog. But um, trying to correct errors uh, was not as great a success. So I had captured and renamed to my hard drive uh, all of these map files as they came out 
for our 1950 targeted areas. And because of that, I saw that there were a number of mislinked, mistyped, and misplaced maps. And noted expected but missing maps. Because I had a list that I had generated even before this that had all the cities of over 5,000 that I wanted potentially to have street indexes for. So these errors, and there were a number of them, I sent to the archives in 2017 and 2018. And they corrected a number of them, but they didn't correct all of them. And as of September 2021, there are still errors in their catalog. And some of the errors uh, affect a lot of people, a lot of people. And although I didn't have to do this, as we had compensated for the errors on the one-step indexes. What do I mean by that? Steve spent a lot of time. So if you put in St. Louis, we knew what the errors were, and Steve would ask for the incorrect material from the National Archive catalog. If they fix these errors now, Steve is going to have to go back and reprogram all these things that we did four years ago. Anyway, it, as we had compensated for these in, these problems, I tagged, and I'll show you what tags means, a number of archive catalog maps to help researchers. And I also tagged hidden maps. I'll show you what I mean. So, hidden maps. As I take a glass of water. Upper Darby Township is in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. It has a lot of people. It deserves an enumeration district map. I'm going to show you what happens before and after tagging. Now, this example is not an error, not an error of the archives, but an outcome of the way files were named or named and searched. So here I am, and uh, I'm using an earlier version, obviously, of the catalog. Uh, I've had this example for a number of years. I search for Upper Derby, 1950 census map Upper Derby. I can't find it. It doesn't show up. So I do a trick that I've done in the past, which is instead of searching for Upper Derby, I search for the county it's in. With the idea that if I search for Delaware County, that if I misspelled up a Derby or there was a typo, it would show up. And you can see that you get um, Glen Olden, you get Lansdowne, you get everything, but you don't get up a Derby. At this point, you might say, I'm going to give up. I'm going to go over to the Unified tool, see whether we have up a Derby. Yes, we do. We have a street indexes for it. Or do we have an ED map for Upper Darby Township? Yes, we do. However, however, if we searched for that Delaware County, Pennsylvania, and we're astute about it, we would see as one of the search results on the bottom here a funny looking search result where it talks about an urbanized area vicinity of Philadelphia. And it has a sequence of EDs, not a, just a block of them, but uh, one from 7 to 11, 15 to 17, etc. And if we looked inside of that, oh, first we'll define urbanized area. An urbanized area consists of one or more cities of 50,000 or more, which Philadelphia certainly is, and all the nearby closely settled suburban territories or urban fringe. We look inside this, on the bottom right, you'll see there are 12 maps. We're on image three. And uh, it turns out that that's where Upper Darby is, right there. It's hiding in there. And the reason it doesn't appear is because it does not appear in the title of the map. So I decided I would start tagging records. So I became a researcher, I had uh, a, a password, I could log into the, uh, the uh, archive catalog. And so, uh, for instance, I went to this particular map sequence, and on the left you can see I've added, I've added 
uh, a tag that Upper Darby Township is in this map sequence. And I might have also, uh, I think there's a way of saying more information, say it's, in, it's on map three. So the next time somebody would search on Upper Darby after tagging, they will see, but may not understand, why they suddenly get, um, uh, let me get the laser pointer, why they suddenly get uh, this as a result. Because it doesn't say Upper Darby in. And uh, Upper Darby doesn't show, it's a tag. Uh, and uh, if, the, if they're smart enough to actually look inside of this, they will find Upper Darby. So that's one way of tagging. The next two, the next two are errors in the National Archives Index and tagging kind of corrects one search, but probably uh, I don't think that a researcher would understand uh, the second uh, tag and would ignore it. And both are solved on the one-step map utility. And these are not, uh, these are not errors that only uh, involve a couple of people. We're talking about 100,000 people or more probably. So before tagging, if you were to search the National Archives catalog for 1950 census map St. Louis, Missouri, MO, if one search for St. Louis, Missouri before I tagged some of the maps there, one would not see any listing for either the city or the county map for St. Louis. We would find, however, a number of city maps with St. Louis in St. Louis County. Now, how did how did that work? So, where's the map? Well, it's right where it's supposed to be. Well, that's certainly going to make Louis unhappy. And you might give up on that search. And of course, you could go to the one step site and we would show you the map for St. Louis and we would show you the ED, um, the ED file for it. But after I tag it, if you were to enter 1950 census map St. Louis, Missouri, you will get to both the county map and the city map. But watch what you get. And I'm going to blow this up. And what you get is a misspelled county and a misspelled city. So the title of this map is not St. Louis County, it's St. Low Ius County in both the county and the city. So I couldn't even find this by just looking for county and looking for a typo. And you know, this is a perfect storm situation. But, but, a person looking up St. Louis won't know this. They won't know that I tagged this and they'll get to the right area and they may say to themselves, well, that's kind of interesting if they notice it. Uh, it's been misspelled. So maybe there's not going to be an outcry of people to fix this. However, there's something else wrong with St. Low I Us City. Now, it's going to be a shame when the National Archive does fix this error. And they'll probably eventually fix this. And if they don't, this will be a good example. And that's to find St. Joseph, Missouri. Now, remember, St. Joseph, Missouri, we looked at earlier. It's in Buchanan County. Before tagging, you could not find it on the index. Can't, can't be found. After tagging, after tagging, you find, oh, look, this is interesting. You find the map, but the map is, says it's in St. Loias City. How can you have a city within a city? Besides, it's not in St. Loias County. It's in Buchanan County. And the chances are you're going to, nah, not even going to bother looking at that. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at this. If we look at it, we find out that there are four maps 
in St. Loias. You look in the bottom left, well, one of the maps doesn't have the same color. You look in the bottom right, there are four maps. Yes, yeah, St. Louis does have four maps. One of them is missing, actually. We had to um, um, recreate that map. And the fourth map is, and guess what the fourth map is? The fourth map is St. Joseph. So this map is not only misplaced under St. Louis, but is in a different county. If you go on the One Step website, we, you, we will show you the St. Joseph map. But the interesting thing is this, that um, there's a number of reasons why I did this. But if you look at uh, this area here, where data is presented from, we have plus additional 1950 ED maps that we created because they were missing from the National Archive um, catalog. And I treated St. Joseph as if it was a missing map, which meant that I took the narrow map and put it in a folder on the One Step site and we direct this to that folder. So if you get the map from this utility, St. Joseph map, you're not getting it from directly from the National Archive. You're actually getting it from a file from the One Step website, uh, something that we don't necessarily want to happen because of the bandwidth involved. Uh, but uh, if they ever do ch fix this, then uh, I think uh, I won't have to change it again. There are truly missing maps, uh, or illegible maps, uh, that National Archive has. Remember that the 1950 rural communities, most unincorporated communities and small towns under 5,000 will only be on county maps at the National Archive, the NARA catalog, and the names won't be indexed in their online catalog unless someone tags them. In terms of what we did in our transcriptions is that um, I decided that any areas under 30,000 um, which have unusable maps, I won't, I won't try and, and get uh, uh, ED street indexes for. And they're missing from our city list. In addition, I removed all the five to 10,000 targeted areas which had missing or poor National Archive ED, ED maps. They don't appear. And that left about 24 um, areas of 10,000 or 20,000 lacking resources, but low priority and many of those weren't done. I tried to find out what status was of many missing 1950 urban areas that I had pegged to be, to be done on the catalog without success, but I persisted and wanted to know about Portland, Oregon with a third of a million people. Was it missing from the collection? Were they, did they miss it on digitization? Was it out for preservation? And it turns out it was pulled in 2016 in bad shape. Actually, um, uh, there's a university up in uh, Oregon that had a grant and had the National Archives uh, photo static all of the Oregon 1950 ED maps. And I found where that film was up in a library up there and looked at the Portland map and it's in terrible, terrible condition. And so we made our own ED maps for, other, for over 20 missing urban areas of over 20,000 and for over 100,000. Now, how do you do that? You take the ED boundary definitions, you take a circa 1950 map, um, and you make an ED boundary map. Although I didn't do that for Portland, but I'd really like the, the, uh, um, the uh, graphics of that map. I'll show you how I did it for Portland. And I have a lot of maps. You can see I have a vintage map collection and, and maps we didn't have we could appeal to city libraries and historical societies and mostly were successful, especially in 1940. 1950 wasn't as successful. Got lots of maps. And so we have maps 
that the National Archives does does not have for these four urban 1950 areas. And those can only be found through our map index. So let me show you one of the maps. So let's say I do a search for a 1950 census map, Charlottetown, South Carolina. You can see that's an older graphics. And I find, lo and behold, there it is. 1950 census enumeration district map, South Carolina, Charleston County, Charleston. Uh, no, that's not the city. That's the urbanized area that they didn't recognize and didn't put in the title. And so people think, hey, they got the city, they look at the map, they are confused. The map doesn't exist there. We have the map. In fact, we had to do this Charleston, Charleston City uh, because of the, uh, uh, the error on the, um, the NARA uh, catalog. This is how we did it. The 1950 housing schedule has uh, cities of 50,000 or more and has track maps with um, block numbers. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but there are good maps. Here's Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, the track numbers are in large numbers, or they could be wards. I'll see, yeah, they're wards. So here is 48-1 Charleston City, you're in Ward 1. Um, the blocks are numbered from one to as many blocks as there are in Charleston. Uh, and it just gets picked up. And so this is great. So I know 48-1 is in 49.5, 496, 497. And using uh, GIMP, which is a graphics program and kind of a, a, a not a paintbrush, but a paint pail, I just poured color into uh, the various blocks and created this map. And we put this online. And the same thing for Portland. So that is our uh, non-copyright map that I could put uh, out for the public. These census tract maps might be interesting for you. They're found in Bureau of Housing pamphlets. And the housing pamphlets summarize housing information for blocks in these large cities, not for your individual address, for, for the blocks. And so if you're interested in that sort of information, I have a, a YouTube video on it. So that ends the uh, video on how to use enumeration district maps with an emphasis on the 1940 and 1950 censuses. Covered a lot of material, but if you're going to use these maps, uh, I thought it would be worthwhile to come up with this special sort of video. This has been another of my JDW talks. I have YouTube talks on genealogy topics, natural history topics, including a field trip I took in 1966, risk my life for science, and miscellaneous uh, videos of uh, areas I am interested in. So I hope you have success when the 1950 census comes out in April of 2022. Bye-bye.